This is Leadership in Action, and I'm Mark Stiles, your host. Join me as we delve deep into the passions, expertise, and experiences of Boston area innovators. Sponsored by the Boston Chapter of Entrepreneurs Organization, this is Leadership in Action. Hey, folks, welcome back to Leadership in Action. Today, I'm really excited to introduce this next guest. He's an entrepreneur and business owner who uses his experiences to drive solutions for his customers. He is a hands-on leader who knows how to drive strategy and swiftly execute a plan. His company was featured in Inc. Magazine's Inc. 500 in 2020 and in 2021. His company was also named a member of the MSP 501 in 2020, 2021, and 2022. He is about to be a new member of EO Boston. He is the president and CEO at IT Management Solutions. Please meet Pedro Nunez. Welcome to the show, Pedro. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello, Mark. All right, let's get right to it. Hurrah. What is a common misconception about leadership, running a business, and being an entrepreneur? All righty then. So before I answer that question, let me tell everybody, I'm raw. Uh, what you see is what you get. I don't hide anything, so buckle up. Let's so, do it. Conception, very quickly, anybody can be an entrepreneur, but not everybody can be a leader. And the difference between those is an entrepreneur, anybody can open up a business, making money and actually run for the hill, try to conquer it. But not everybody has their ability to persuade, motivate, and actually create some sort of cult, you know, a culture of individuals that will go along with you to the journey and conquer the world. That makes sense? So to be a leader, you have to be able to have those attributes. You have to be able to motivate people and actually be able to help others in the journey that you're actually trying to embark on. You know, it's 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 amazing what you said there. And I've never really thought deeply about that word culture, the cult and the culture. It's funny, uh, Dave Will, member at EO, I'm sure, actually, I know you met him at the Dan Dapani event. He made these hats for our regional meetings. So the Boston chapter wore these hats, ask me about my cult, right? But cult and culture, all one thing, right? One word, culture. Mm -hmm. Tell me about an entrepreneur though, right? So I mean, they're all over the internet, right? The Instagram influencers. I'm an entrepreneur. I'll show you how to do it. But, but that's that's the whole point, right? So when you look at entrepreneurs, I call them solopreneurs, right? Versus a leader. It all depends on what your end game, you know, is um, what you're looking for for the end. Like Dan Dipani, right? Like when we were in that event, he talked about, you know, all these different things. But he said it that, uh, that everybody he's, needs to have an end goal. What are you working towards? Because if you don't know that, then the path to getting there is going to be a lot more difficult. The same thing applies to business, right? So everybody, for example, we had a quick conversation. Let me let me explain to you this thing about the different stages of companies. Mm. Um, whenever whenever you start a business and you go from zero to one million dollars, that is basically sheer brute force. There's no elegance whatsoever. You're working your butt off trying to make that million. Break when you stuff. get to that million, one to three million. Oof, you're working harder. However, you figure out that you need a team and you need to start hiring people. However, there's still no elegance to it whatsoever. And what I mean by elegance is systems and structures, right? McDonald's has elegance. It is a complete system-based enterprise that works without anybody like a machine. That thing produces money 24-7. Most small businesses in America can accomplish that. And the reason for it is because of the lack of leadership, right? And we and and I'll talk to you in a minute about how you can address that issue. But then, for example, you got three to five million. That's the black hole. The black hole where all companies come to die or basically stagger or don't break through. You know, when you look at the SBA, statistically speaking, the SBA prior to like the last five years, where after all these YouTubers came on, right? Less than two percent of America made a million. Now more than three percent, like three percent make a million because it's easy. You go to YouTube and you start doing all these crazy things, and voila. But how many companies are making one to three million? How many companies are making three to five million? How many companies are making over five million dollars? You know, five million dollars or above. You're talking about like less of a half of a percent, like a fraction. You know, right. and that's because, yeah, that's that's because once you get to that three million hole, 
you have to work like hell, but you have to work in a way that is smart with systems, structures, efficiency, logistics. You have to think about the whole the whole picture, micro level, right? And, and, and you need to come up with ways to say, how can I build a McDonald's? You know, something that I have a marketing system, a sales process, an onboarding process, a customer journey process. How can I upsell my clients? How can I keep them happy? How can I grow? How can I do an acquisition? How can you expand? All these different things comes into mind. And that's what sets, you know, the entrepreneur from a leader. You know, in, in order for you to get over that black hole, you have to become a leader. There's no because, other way. And that leader has to be able to implement these processes and systems and you get buy-in from everybody, even everybody. to the point of the smallest wrapping of that cheeseburger. That is correct. Exactly. The customer experience, right? What everybody, you know, what... Oh my God, getting a customer is super easy. Well, not anymore, depending on what industry you're on, but right. maintaining the customer and keeping them happy, that's the tough part right there, you know? So that and goes- And to be and consistent culture. and to be consistent, right? And to have that same customer experience that they can count on each and every each and every time. Yeah, but that's process. Yeah. You know, and and one thing that I learned over the years is, and um, I travel a lot to DR, and um, I met some people on the countryside that are filthy rich, and these people are dealing with cattle, and 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 pigs and stuff like that. And you'd be like, holy moly, how the heck do they do it? And they actually have like masses, like thousands of heads, right? They're not talented at what they do because anybody can move a cow from left to right. It's all about consistent and discipline, doing the exact same thing day in day out, and then reviewing the outcomes, right, to make them better. Every quarter, every week, every year, nonstop. So the folks in the Dominican are working their product with a process and a system? Yeah. Like my brother, for example, he has, oof, I don't even know. He actually like does uh, agriculture and he has, let's say, a plantation with 50,000 plants of plantains. Okay. To give you an example. And then he cultivates those and then he actually exports those to Florida. He started doing the same thing for avocado. In the United States, um, ninety percent or more of the actual limes being imported come from Mexico. Mexico has the whole thing. Dominican Republic has 0. 0.5. 0. 0.5. Why is that? Why can't know. they have? Why can't they have five percent, three percent? Mexico yeah. is is got all the lime business. They've got yeah, all the, much for the yeah yeah for the most part. So when you look at these things, right, going back to system structure, it's all about consistency, discipline, systems, and structure. It's that simple. It doesn't matter what you apply it to. So my brother started doing all these different things, and I'm using him as an example because he's not an agriculture guy. Yeah. He's actually an entrepreneur. He's a visionary. He's a leader. He owns a big company that works on, um, he does these big events for like doctors, you know, where he brings in like 1,500 doctors from all over the world to do a Congress, let's say in DR, like four times a year. Yeah. Um, and then he got into agriculture and then he also does real estate development. And you see, that's an entrepreneur. But the whole point is, if he's just one guy, can one guy do all that? He can. If he's a good leader. Exactly. There you go. You get it. So he got, a, you know, he got <laughs> like between all his companies, he got over 100 employees. Wow. You know, and, and why? Because then he's able to delegate and he's able to actually create systems and structure that things run like a McDonald's. The same thing applies to you, to me, to anybody. Right. The most important thing is to be able to realize that getting to 1 million, yeah, it's hard. But once you get to that 1 million, oh boy, you better run like hell to three. But then once you get there, if you think it's easy, mm -mm, that's when it gets tough. Make sense? And yeah. two to five, I'm telling you, you can look it up. Uh, Crabtree, uh, Crabtree wrote a, a book called Simple Numbers. And he basically talks about, <laughs> about exactly that, you know, um, how, how, how most companies get to that level and then they die. Or oh, they get, you know, they stay there and they never go above three million or four. So how did you learn about process and strategies? I am super driven. Yeah. I'm hungry. I'm motivated. I know exactly where I'm going to be when I'm 55. I'm 44, you know, and I'm not perfect. I actually learned how to I have my wake up call when I was 37. Okay. You know, and I was stuck at a million and a half, let's say. And I was like, what the heck am I doing wrong? And that's when I realized that as the leader of the company, I set the tone, I set the ceiling. My ceiling was too low. So all of my goals and objectives were low. For that same reason, my employees didn't have, you know, the capacity to go beyond me. 
because that's the tone, right? Yeah. So I started working on myself and educating myself. And then I started raising that ceiling. And then I never stopped. Was, Developing a, go ahead. Was, was that the process and the systems part of that growth? Yeah. One, one of the most important thing that I think helped me out tremendously was that I use, like I said, smart goals. I have yeah. priorities. And then my priorities are, you know, then drive the goals, right? And then I set my goals for five years. I have a five-year plan that tells you exactly how I'm going to get there year over year, conservatively. And 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 then that, then I bring it down to a year. And then that, I bring it down to quarters and then two weeks. So I track, for example, how many phone calls we make to prospects every single week, how many postcards goes out every single week, how many direct letters go out every single week, how much money are we spending on Google pay-per-click on Bing, on, on social media ads, how many impressions are we getting before we get an actual, um, an actual lead come through? What is the actual value? How much it costs me to get one lead? How much it costs me to get the actual customer? What's the long-term value of that customer? Yeah. You know, so all those, those little things may sound like, oh my God, that's a lot, but if, but Put it this way, if I could tell you, hey, Mark, it's going to cost you $5,000 a month for a contract that's going to give you $100,000 in one in three years, right? If you know that and that's like accurate, wouldn't you just grab $100,000 and get 20 customers, 20 times 100, you know, that's, you know, 2 million divided by three, 600,000, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like a ton of money. It's, 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 it's very simple. Systems and structure. That's that's all you need. But you need to know your numbers. Like in and out, left and right. So tell me about that. You had mentioned that before. You need to know your numbers. Numbers don't lie. Where did you get that? Where did you where did you pick that up along the way? Right? I mean. Yeah. So so for example, let me tell you, like, okay, let me give you an example. Um imagine that for the past 12 quarters, that's three yeah. years. Quarter over quarter, you've been able to get $10,000 of service contracts every month. And you've been able to grow your company year over year for the past five years, let's say 15%. And you see the pattern because you start creating patterns, right? How do you think you can utilize that data looking forward? Well, data is everything, right? So it's the historical to determine exactly, drill down what you need to do to get to that that point. Exactly. So, so for example, projections are huge. If you track your numbers correctly after a period of time, right, you should be have solid information that tells you what's going to happen in the next four quarters. So, for example, let's say due to the situation that we have in the economy right now, let's say for instance, my business slows down like thirty percent from our you know from a recurring revenue point of view. Yeah. But next year, I'm saying to myself, what is the minimum I need to do to do a have to have a 15% net profit EBITDA, right? What is the minimum I need to do to grow my cash flow by a quarter of a million dollars? What is the minimum I need to do to do X, Y, and Z? And that number is like 50% of what I normally get. So I'm going conservative. And then I'm saying, but hold on a second. If I look at my marketing efforts, it has been two, three, four times hotter to get anything now than what it was years ago. So that means my marketing that? effort because of the economy, the lovely recession that we're in that nobody yeah. wants to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. November 2022, for those listening uh, later uh, later on, we're talking about right before the Thanksgiving holiday 2022. So people don't want to spend the money, right? They can do it themselves, right? Because they're afraid. No, they right. cannot do it themselves. Right. People, like for example... Um, I cannot do what you do. You right. cannot do what I do. Right. Right. And so on and so on. So the problem is that people are afraid of investing right now, anything, especially in technology, right? Because they don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. And here's what right. I say to people. Number one, during tough times, the number one thing you need to do is double down on your marketing. Right. Why? Because your competitors are slowing down. Then you double down. So right. you will take double the impression share on the market. So- I never stop marketing. So if my competitors are spending 50% less than I, now I'm coming up in the ads 50% more, right? right? So that's that. Second thing is, how can you reduce the amount of risk that you have in your organization? Right now, more than ever, the number one risk to small businesses is cybersecurity. 
people people don't see it that way. But that's because once again, there's a lot of small businesses. But those businesses that are actually getting to three million or higher, those businesses now start using computer systems, databases, marketing systems, billing systems, all these different things. They have to meet regulatory compliance for the state at the federal level and so on and so on. And all it takes is for one employee to click something and then the whole thing is ransom. <laughs> and then <clears throat> you say, oh, I have insurance. Uh-huh. Well, there's something called willful negligence. Yeah. You know, when you file the insurance and the insurance company said, you're doing all these different things. If you said that you did and you didn't, they're going to decline your claim, number one. Number two, let's assume that you have insurance, they're going to cover it and you can get back up and running. If you got 10 computers in one server, it takes about seven days to get back up and running, assuming you're not going to file a claim. If you're going to file a claim, it takes a lot longer than that, unless you have the proper systems in place. But if you had the proper systems in place, it would have never gotten hacked, right? Right. Huh. Right. Be so, proactive, right? Be proactive so you exactly. don't have to react, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's a really interesting concept because the other thing is what about the goodwill, right? You're down. You're down. You got to send out that email to all the clients. You know, we're down. We're not going to be able to respond to anybody. We're doing the best we can, hoping and praying. Hope, hopefully you'll be there when we come out of this on the other side. That's a scary proposition. So is that is that something your company does? Yeah, that's exactly what we focus on. We're a cybersecurity firm. We do managed services. We basically become the IT department for most people. But one thing that I forgot to mention before, yeah. one most one of the most important things to do is to look. There's there's always a better way. What's measure? What's not measure is not known, right? right. What's measure improves, but what's measure and reported upon improves exponentially. And that means analyzing your data. Yeah. So just like the way you have goals and the way you do all, many different things, for example, if you're able to say, holy moly, this past quarter, I did X, Y, and Z, and I generated this much money. And then you dive into what you did. Yeah. And then you study and you say, man, I lost those three opportunities. This didn't happen. And then you figure out the why. And then you fine tune that process and you make it better. Next quarter, you will increase the ROI on whatever you just did. So improvement in efficiencies is drastic. But in order to do that, you need systems and structure. And you need technology in order to be able to achieve that. Huh. That's pretty cool. So so what is some of the strategies that you're implementing in your own company, IT management solutions that help facilitate through this? Um, <clears throat> well, like, okay. That's a very general question. Well, you you had mentioned um, PXE. That was something that you were you were talking about when we did our prep call. Planning times execution. Ah, okay. You're talking about okay. So so one of the things that you know this, I I'm a simple guy, so I try to simplify everything. So oh, I for love me, it. I mean, well, no, that's like the, a numbers the, guy. That's the brilliance, right? Taking something super complicated and simplifying it to me is the definition of brilliance. So, oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. So, so basically, so I created my own formula in my head and I literally wrote it down and that's how I do everything. I actually do SMART goals and my SMART goal is to planning times execution. This is the formula, planning times execution times triple R, R to the third, review, rinse and repeat, all of that while being laser focused. That yields results. And you may say, how the hell do I apply that? Well, it's very simple. Like Dan DePani said. Yeah. So for instance, um, next year, I want to break that $4 million, you know, uh, 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 cycle, right? And let's say I'm at 3.5. And I know that I can get half a million. But what does that look like? You break it down by quarters. Then you like break it down by weeks. How many appointments do I need to make? How many touches and dials do I need to make before I get that appointment? So you build a system based on the outcome that you're looking for. If you don't know how to, <clears throat> then you work with companies such as myself, right? This is not what we do. We know for, for our customers that they come on and we have business conversation, if they want to pick my brain, I'm more than happy. And I can show them everything that I do. I run my business based on the Rockefeller habits. That's scaling up. Yeah, There's a great website out there called aligntoday.com. That's how you run everything that I'm talking about here. System structures, goal orientation the whole time, creating a company cultures, KPI, keeping people, you know, holding people accountable. All of that you can set up online. Right. But the most the most difficult part is, are you going to do it? Right. Are you going to do those huddles with your employees for 15 minutes every day? Are you going to do the weekly huddles with operations, with sales, with marketing? 
Are you going to look at your numbers from a financial point of view so you know from a cash flow perspective, how do you start your month, how you're going to end, and why? Do you have contingency plans in case you lose 20% of your revenue? You know, Are so you a, going to do it? Are you going to actually do the hard work, right? But that's what said that that's the difference between successful people and the ones that are not. You don't need to be talented. You need to be as consistent and disciplined, man. Right. I love that. I love that. So what excites you about the future? We talked about the the in, you know, the recession that we're in currently, but what what excites you about the future? I know you're you're doubling down on marketing, you're digging in and you're gonna shift through this 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 change. What what, do you, what are you seeing? Um for me, I think that Bob, what, what Warren Buffett says, right? When everybody's fearful, you be yeah. greedy. But you're going to be greedy with a smart, you know, with a, with a smart head. And it's all about priorities, right? Right now, cash is king. Cash is king. So I am investing on anything that yields a return on investment. That is efficiency in putting my business. That is marketing and sales. And aside from that, making sure that our processes, you know, and our staff are, are number one, that our staff are happy, you know, my employees are happy, that they're not worried about the future. I painted a picture for the next three years as to what I see happening and how as a company we're going to get from point A to point C, A, B, C, you know? And the whole point here is to, by doing that, you remove the uncertainty from the workplace. And I think that makes people more productive because they're not worrying about things that are, are going to happen. Wow. As a CEO, I do worry, you know, because the number one thing for me right now, more than anything, cash is king. You need to be cash flow. Right. And during the pandemic, I was baffled. Like, how many restaurants in Boston that have been around for 30 years? Mm. 30 years, they went under. Right. I'm like, how can you go under? You didn't even have six months of rent or four months of rent. Or what? What were you doing? That's the difference between a company that makes a million, three, or five. Right. Or is check to check, Right. Check to check. So are you having conversations with your clients? Are they sharing their anxieties and fears with you? And are you having conversations about what is absolutely necessary right now? Well, every, like I do, I have personal relationship with a lot of my customers and I mean, clients. And when we talk, everybody's in the same boat. Um, things have gotten a lot, you know, their revenue has decreased because, you know, people are holding out more than yeah. ever. Number one, they are, they're feeling that uncertainty, but they know they're going to get by because a lot of the customers, the clients that I work with, they're mature companies. Like if you go to my website, it says, this is like, like it, there's a button that says uh, message for the CEO. <laughs> if you read it, it tells you who we're for and who we're for now. Right. So, well, you know, uh, yeah, because uh, I like to associate myself. Yeah. I mean, you know, like I always say to people, you are a combination of the five people you hang around with. Right. Now applying that concept to your business. Right. Right. Let's save the time. If we're not going to be a good fit, don't click past that button right there. No, right? it's like, I mean, you, you, you got businesses that, that basically, oh, I need IT support. Yeah. And then when I do assessments, I look at businesses from a business production point of view. I think I'm the only profit centric IT provider in New England. Everybody just focuses on, oh, I can fix this. I can fix that. Where I'm like more like, how can we increase your revenue? How can we mitigate risk? How can we get you, you know, to where you need to be? Doing the technical part is easy peasy. Right. You know? But, you know, as time goes on, the industry and the world's changing so much that every IT provider out there is going to have to become some sort of business consultant. Yeah. I would think it would be kind of a nice marriage of businesses, right? To to have that because it's, they, they intertwine so much, right? Yeah. Like all of the different platforms and softwares where, you know, your ABC uh, IT solutions, they may not have any idea what you're doing. They need to understand what you're doing in order yeah. to marry those those uh, software solutions together. Yeah, but, but everything, yeah, but everything, Mark, goes back to what I said at the beginning. It's all about the end game. So for example, let's say, let's say you want to make $5 million. Yeah. And then here comes an IT provider or somebody that you're working with, a consulting, a CPA, whatever, somebody that's making only $2 million. And you need somebody that can advise you because you're trying to get to 10. That person is a two. He hasn't even gone to the black hole yet. <laughs> right. Right? So by once again, you need to find people that are at a higher level 
So they can actually explain to you how they have overcome all of those obstacles and they can get you from point A to point C. The same thing applies to technology, man. You know, databases are databases, yeah. but how you leverage the technology is huge. If you don't know what the heck you're doing, you're not leveraging it to make money, then what's the point? Do you know? I so do. that's the way that I see it. You're going to love EO, by the way. I can already tell. <laughs> Hey, so so it was, it's been fun learning with you. Let's learn about you a little bit. You know, Dude. where how did you get to where you were? To help me understand what brought you, Pedro, to IT management solutions. Oh boy, let's <clears throat> go back. Let's go back in the time machine a little bit. All righty then. <clears throat> so for me, I am I'm 44 years old. Okay. Um, I come from humble beginnings. I was uh, I graduated from high school when I was 17. I went to college for a semester. My mom's disabled. She was, she got disabled in 1995, having myalgia. She's the right, loved the woman. And she basically, I wanted to be a doctor. I couldn't be a doctor because it was too much money. So I turned 18. I went to the army recruiter station, joined in, became a combat medic or a tech, went around the country, uh, joined the reserves. And then very quickly, as I started growing up, I was like in my 20s, or early 20s, 21, 22. I quickly realized that I couldn't become a doctor because it was going to cost hundreds of thousands of dollars and I didn't have the guidance, you know, somebody to tell me, hey, this is what you need to do. This is what you need right. to study. Take this, take that, which is fine. Yeah. I took, I took one elective, one elective in college and I was very intrigued as to how do you send an email or a fax from the United States and it goes to Japan within a matter of seconds. Mm. So I took the elective networking 101 in Northern Essex Community College, one of the best schools ever, in my opinion. All schools are great. Is the students the problem, right? So, um, so I went, uh, I went there, and to me, technology was like one plus one is two. I saw binary numbers. I understood subnetting the whole gamma. There was like forty plus students. Everybody was like, "What? What is that?" And I was like, "I got an A plus." So I took right networking away. two. Yeah, I took a networking two, and I was like, "Oh my god, this is awesome." By the time I took the work in three, the last one, the teacher already kind of caught on that I was, that was kind of like something that I could do. And he kind of opened up my eyes and said, hey, you can actually do a business out of this. If you do X, Y, and Z, meaning that if you get Cisco certified or Microsoft certified, back in 2002, Cisco certified network associates, ECNA, could make like 70 grand. So, but I couldn't pay for the boot camp. That was like 30,000. <laughs> oh, really? Went, yeah. So I went to Barnes and Nobles, got myself a book, ate the book. <laughs> Month later, went took the test and passed it, and wow. that's when every yeah, that's when everybody in class was like, "Whoa!" So after that, I said, "Okay, I think this is what I'm gonna do." So I started fixing computers, doing POS systems for grocery stores all over Rhode Island, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, all over the place. And one thing led to another, and I never looked back. Isn't uh, that amazing? Isn't it amazing? Simply by walking into that one classroom that one day, saying, "I'm interested in this." it changed the trajectory of your life completely. Mm -hmm. You thought health, you were focused on that health industry somewhere, somehow, hell or high water, right? At that point, you probably hadn't given up on the idea of being a doctor, which by the way, I think is a shame that that, that still can be so possible, that somebody who wants to do something simply can't. No, it's okay. You know why? Because it builds character. Of so course. let me tell you. Let me well, tell you. Also, thing. it also it also may have been the wrong path for you, right? But it's that mindset, though, that you know, I I can't actually do this because, and that to me, and and it and it is. It's maybe it simply is he didn't meet the right person to give him that proper guidance to show him how to do it. But you ended up meeting this person in Northern Essex Community College who did just that and that aha moment, which I always find fascinating because. Many people that I talk with can do that. They can pinpoint that moment in time where they said, this is what changed the trajectory of my life. Really? But you know what helped a lot? You know what helped a lot, Mark? Yeah. Remember at the beginning, I said visualizing where yes. you want to be, where you want to end up. You're not going to believe me, but at the age of 21, 2021, at least once a month, I took a drive. I drove uh, the Andover Country Club in Andover, Mass. Yep. If you go there, there is a residential area. And if you go in, for example, through 28, you're going to end up you know, going through the uh, residential area and coming out where the golf course is. The whole thing is, if you drive through there, there's about a quarter of a mile to a mile worth of a drive 
of all those houses. Those mm -hmm. houses are like mansions. Mm -hmm. And I used to drive through there when I was 20 years old. And I used to look at those places. And I used to say, one day, I'm going to live in a house like that. And I always said it to myself. I used to work in Tewsbury and the Verizon helped us when I started my, my technical career. And I used to drive through, uh, through Tewsbury and there was a bunch of beautiful houses. And I used to, once a month, I used to drive through all of those houses just to remind myself, one day, you're going to live in one of those houses. Isn't it amazing what the power of visualization will do? It's everything, bro. It's everything, yeah. You cannot visualize it. You can't accomplish it. I tell my employees, do you see the house that you want? Go to Google, find me a picture, print and put it in front of your desk. I shut you not. Three of them or four of them did it. Three of them got a house. That was three years ago. They own a house now. Wow. Wow. That's really impactful. And that's, that is the definition of a leader, right? The person who can help prop someone up like that and help them believe. But with that visualization, you also get the naysayers, right? How do you turn off the noise for someone that says, come on, Pedro, you're dreaming. You can't do that. I just had a pool put in in my house uh, <laughs> in the, this year. The pool guy is a construction guy that I know for, Jesus, 44 years. I was 22 when I met him. Wow. And I haven't seen the guy like in eight years. I called him off. Hey, Julio, can you help me out with a pool? Yeah, how much is it? Blah, 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 blah. And he comes and did it. And he knows I got a couple of, you know, several properties. Uh, and when he came to his house, you know, to this house, he actually told me and said, damn, dude. I'm like, what will happen? Everybody was talking so much. Kaka. Oh, Pedro talks too much that he's going to do this, that he's going to be that and whatever. Because I'm always, you know, always visualize the future and I want it to be something. And you said it out loud. It. I didn't want to find, you know, to my, to my close friends, yeah. I always say, dude, you got to do this. You got to whatever. Yeah. Go read this book. Go study yeah. and whatever. Do some marketing. Organize yourself. Get, get a logo, blah, 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 blah. Get a website. Stupid stuff. People think it's stupid stuff. Yeah. But when you do a lot of great things and they compound together over the years to something fantastic, right? And he actually complimented me and that kind of made me feel good. He was like, you know, he, you know, he said, wow, man, 24 years later, look at what you are. Everything you said you were going to do, you're done. I'm like, oh, and that's nothing. <laughs> Just wait. <laughs> that's all that, that that's all that you can see right now. I love that. You know? I love but that. Yeah, visualizing is everything, man. You know what I mean? But going back to the thing about leadership, for me, I find happiness. And that's one of the things I did from Dan DePani, helping other people. Yeah. It shouldn't be that way. I do enjoy. I love helping People, I love, you know, working with business owners, not only on helping them with the technology issues, but also helping them leverage the technology to reach where they need to be next, yeah. right? To make the life simpler. If you go to my website, it says making life simpler. That's what we do, you know? And um, I don't know, it gives, it gives me joy to do that. You know, it, it, it's kind of like meaningful and impactful. When I die, I want to be remembered like the guy that helped all these different people, you know, get a house, improve their family, their livelihood, whatever, you know? I love that. I love that so much. So, so tell me about the personal life. You've got a family. Tell me oh, about yeah. your family a little bit. Oh man, I got five kids. Wow. I got I got triplets that are twelve years old: Isabella, Daniela, and Pedro Samuel. And then I got a five year old, Dylan. And then I got a next week on December first. He's gonna be two. That is the grambling in the family. <laughs> Pedro Sebastian, that kid is this. It's, it's, it's a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, love and no it. more kids after that for anybody wondering. Okay, I was wondering. I wasn't going to ask, but I was absolutely wondering. I'm the youngest Look, of five. I'm the youngest <laughs> of five, so I can empathize with you. But well, you know what's funny? Every single one of those births happened during a crisis. When the 2008 2009 bubble burst, that's when I had the triplets. Um, then this, um, the last one happened during COVID. Yeah. Oh yeah. Now there's a recession coming up and I'm like, oh boy, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they have a medical procedure for that. Yeah, uh, exactly. You know, been there, done that. <laughs> oh, there you go. Hey man, I want to welcome you to EO and, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you at a lot of the learning events and I'm really looking forward to seeing you grow and, and teach others from your, from your past and your stories and your strategies. And, and, uh, you know, I really, I want to congratulate you on, on making that jump to EO, because I think it's, it's really, truly going to benefit you, your life and your business. So how do people get in touch with you if they want to work with you, my man? Um, well, first of all, thank you, Mark, you know, for, for having me here today and for everybody who's going to listen to this or is listening to this. 
Um, and um, I'm here to help as many people as you know as as I can. Anybody that needs me, they'll be you know just just reach out. How they can get a hold of me is very simple. Go to the website www.itmanagementsolutions.com. Itmanagementsolutions.com. Um, if you want to talk to me, you, there's a button that says book discovery call. We can have a quick chat, you know, whatever it may be. If you don't know, if you're stuck in your business and you want to get to the next level and you want to learn how to leverage technologies, KPIs or whatever it may be, you know, we can definitely have that conversation. We can help you get there. Um, well, you can just give us a call on the website right there. 855-551-TECH, T-E-C-H. And I'm sure Liam will make sure that that's in the show notes, folks. But don't forget to go to the website and click the message to the CEO because you know what? Maybe you're not a good fit. Right, <laughs> we can save <laughs> save Pedro some time there, but chances are you are, and that will probably dig in and and make sure that the uh, the clarity is there, which I I appreciate that. I I love that. You know, it's funny. Some people talk about, you know, I don't want to say the wrong thing to turn somebody off. You know, when we talk about getting yeah. on a podcast, and it's like, you know what? Why would you want that person as a client? It's only going to be the Pareto's principle. You're going to be stuck. You know, spending a lot of time with that person and a lot of energy you're better off if that person I doesn't fit your mold yeah. then like maybe you're better off not ever meeting you would never know right yeah you want clients not customers you want people that are right. willing to go along with you in the journey right partners the journey together yeah exactly yeah pedro thank you my friend i i truly appreciate you sharing your time and your wisdom with us and um and again i want to welcome you to eo boston chapter man thank you mark thank you everybody Folks, thank you very much for listening. If you learned something today, if you laughed, well, tell somebody about it. Share it with them. Send it along. Let them get to know Pedro. Thanks again. Bye. Folks, this has been another exciting episode of Leadership in Action. We will see you next time. Leadership in Action is sponsored by the Boston Chapter of the Entrepreneurs Organization. As the world's only peer-to-peer -peer network exclusively for entrepreneurs, EO helps transform the lives of those who transform the world.